This is the Invicta Pro Diver with gold case and blue dial. The model number is 26997. I like to just call it the Golden Maraca because it's gold plated and the bracelet rattles like a maraca. This watch is a Rolex Submariner homage. It may be an homage to the Submariner date, which is only $34,000. I don't want to go crazy with specs. I will put the specs on the screen. The Invicta Pro Diver has been reviewed to death. Uh, but I'm not sure if anyone has re has reviewed this particular model. Um, I will do a size comparison between some other watches so that you can get a sense of uh, how big the, this watch is. This is a cheap Casio that one buys at Walmart for about $12. This is a, uh, a Casio G-Shock Square. I'll give you some, some round watches so you can see the uh, compare between more, more normally shaped watches. Um, this is the Vostok Amphibian. Uh, the dimensions of the Amphibian are uh, nearly identical to that of the of the Invicta. Uh, this is the Citizen Pro Master. This watch is very reasonably sized at 40 millimeters in, in diameter. It should fit nearly everyone uh, pretty well. However, the watch is on the thick side at 15 millimeters thick so uh, if you've never worn a thick watch before you're going to be banging it against walls and doors for a, you know a month or two until you get used to it uh, it's not really that big a deal but I just wanted to warn people about this watch's thickness this watch is uh, is made of some type of mystery stainless steel. I say that because uh, I got my specs from the Invicta site and they just say stainless steel. They don't specify which type. The movement is an NH35. You could see it here because it uses a display case back. This really not much to see in the NH35. It's an unspectacular movement, but it is uh, a good entry-level movement. This watch uses cheap materials that other watch companies, big, large watch companies use as well. These are as follows. Uses a mineral crystal. That's what this thing is. Uses hollow end links. That, that, that's this and this. These are hollow. Uh, you can't see that they're hollow from this angle, but you'll just have to take my word for it. It also uses what's called a pressed metal clasp. That's this thin um, material uh, here. This, this topic of these cheap materials being used in watches has been uh, beaten to death. I don't want to discuss it. All I will say is that you should not expect much for a watch that is under a hundred dollars. I bought uh, this watch for sixty-seven dollars at the time. I, I bought it at the Invicta store at the time. Invicta had I, I found on Google Shopping that the uh, Invicta was offering a thirty-five percent discount which I took advantage of. The loom is um, not terrible but not very good. This is not the type of watch that you can uh, put on at night and expect to be able to read the time without uh, great difficulty in the middle of the night. 
you might, if you're lucky, be able to, to barely make out, like, you know, the hands. Uh, but the indexes, the, they will have, the loom will have vanished. The crown is uh, very well knurled. The action is good. It's easy to set the date, the time, blah, blah, blah. But there, there is a major problem with the, uh, I don't know, I, I, wouldn't, I, I wouldn't call it a problem. It's just something that, that makes me um, very uncomfortable with, with the crown in that uh, it, there is no crown pop. When I bought the watch, there was a crown pop. When I talk about crown pop, I mean like when you screw the crown out like I'm doing now, uh, there should be some, you should either hear or feel some pop. Okay, something will, it'll pop out. There's no crown pop now. It makes me question whether this watch is really very water resistant. The best part of the watch is the bezel. And to show you how great this bezel is, I'm going to put it on my wrist because that is the best way of, of um, testing a bezel. <laughs> um, so um, it is just buttery smooth. Uh, it sounds beautiful. I could just turn this thing all day. It grips well. I'm gonna line it up and show you that it lines up perfectly. So let me see, let me try to get it in there and yes, okay. Yeah, it's, uh, there is a little bit of back play, but you know, um, it's really, that's not a big deal. This is just a pretty extraordinary bezel. The watch face, as you can see is, I don't know if you can see it, but it's very attractive. It is a, uh, a nice, uh, has a nice sunburst dial. That is a very beautiful color blue. And the indexes are uh, raised and with a, with a blingy uh, gold uh, bevels. So um, it's, it's actually pretty nice and it's very easy to read. There are four lines of text here which are completely on the bot on on the lower end of the watch face that are completely redundant and unnecessary. Unfortunately, uh, they are the writing is 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 so microscopic and the color of the uh, uh, paint is so dark that you can barely see it. So that is my kind of writing on a watch. The watch has a Cyclops. I love this <laughs> Cyclops. I actually started wearing this watch to work every day because it was just such a pleasure being able to uh, easily read the date on a watch. The, uh, the date within the Cyclops lines up correctly. It's all good. This watch has a product branding overkill and I will point out all the product branding. We have uh, the Invicta Bird and Invicta here. We have uh, an Invicta symbol on the crown, which is pretty normal. We have the Invicta um, name engraved on the side of the watch. We have product branding on the rotor. We have not not one but two Invicta birds on this watch face. We have uh, a smaller one. See that gold bird on the counterbalance of the second hand? That's one. And here, this is all raised. I'm not sure if I told you this, but all the indexes are raised as well as the, the Invicta bird and the Invicta uh, name. And I'll just, uh, let me get this, get the out hand out of your way so you can get a real look at it. There you go. Okay. These are, these are gold, very shiny 
and very raised <laughs> and they're really in your face and they occupy a huge uh, proportion of the dial so it's just sort of uh that's bad in in itself now what really makes this this whole gigantic logo um really um difficult to make out the time is that the i'll show you the and i'll show you how the once the hour hand gets to around 11 to one o'clock it sort of becomes obscured by by the bird and all this clutter and you can't really see i mean especially when it gets to around uh midnight around 12 i should say the you you can't really see the it, it's hard when you're looking at it to, to really make out where where this hour hand is pointing to because you can't see the pointer anymore it's obscured by all that uh clutter all that gold um uh clutter or junk, I, I, I should say. <laughs> uh, you know, the, the Mercedes hand makes it, you know, it, there's no, it needs a pointer. The Mercedes hand is round, the, the hour hand I'm talking about. So it just gets lost in all the, the noise, the gold noise. And, you know, the, once the second hand gets in there, and the, I'm sorry, the hour hand gets in there, and the second hand gets in there, it's not, I, I didn't, it's not moving now, I, I, I have to wind it, but it just becomes one big gold mess, and it's not terrible, it really isn't, it's just completely obnoxious uh, and completely un unnecessary. I don't see, if they really had to put their logo there, I don't see why they couldn't have just uh, uh, painted it on like they did at the bottom with with like unreadable, something really hard to read. I'll talk about the good aspects of the bracelet. Uh, the links are, um, have very smooth edges. Uh, this is a pet peeve of mine and I really appreciate how smooth uh, these are. And uh, the, the bracelet is very attractive like the rest of the watch. Uh, and the bracelet is is pretty comfortable to wear. The the fact that the case back I'll show you is is so thick means that the bracelet doesn't um, sort of wear the, that these it doesn't conform to your wrist as well as one might like. You'll see that, I'm not sure if I'm getting at, but there's some area in the corner, there are areas in the corner, especially in that this right corner, where this link is just not conforming to my wrist. It's sort of stuck out, they're, they're sort of pointing outwards because of the fact that the, um, uh, the, 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 the case back is so thick, and this is what I would call a pregnant case back it's it has like a like a belly to it all right i want to talk about some issues with the clasp first issue is that it's very hard to get your thumb in and this you could uh you know i've i've hurt the the skin under my nail uh just just trying to get get it open and it's just you could hurt yourself just just opening it because there's not enough room here to open it another issue is that it explodes watch okay it shouldn't do that that's that's absurd okay uh another another issue at uh and I'll, and I'll yes is that this is very sharp this this latch here so what what happens is that when you're when you're opening it 
when it explodes. I have scraped skin off of my uh, index finger. Here's another piece that's sharp. This is sharp, but this is much sharper. This piece right here. This is not only sharp, but it's jagged and thin. So what will hap what happens is that you could uh, uh, scrape your skin. Now, see, this is really uncomfortable. I don't even want to show you because this is pretty sharp. Uh, and you could also, I, fortunately I haven't, I haven't hurt anyone, but you could easily hurt someone just by accidentally rubbing against them. And as you can see, there, there's the gap here between the uh, top of the, the clasp and the bottom is way too wide. So uh, this uh, sort of, what, what, what this does is it acts like a magnet for things, items to get stuck in there to snag. Now, it doesn't happen too often, but when it does, it's pretty annoying. And so, and this is sort of like a claw. And, you know, you know, you know it's just, it, it just makes me very uncomfortable, uncomfortable to wearing a watch, to be wearing a watch that's really a claw, or has a claw on it. You could probably use this watch as a weapon. I mean, it's just, this, this, is, this clasp is insane. Now, uh, another serious problem with this watch, and this is the, the deal breaker. I stopped wearing this watch when I discovered this, and I decided to just cut my losses and sell it on eBay. Uh, and I only wore this... I don't know how long this was happening, but I only, I, I noticed this about a month after I started wearing this watch. And I stopped wearing it after that. The uh, gold plating is, is wearing off. So you see this black here, this black here, that's the gold plating wearing off. And you can see it on some other links wearing off there. Um, it's wearing off in, in a number of places. I do know that gold plating wears out, wears off. I don't know how normal it is to have this this uh, rate of of uh, wear. I don't want anything to do with this watch anymore because I, I feel that it's, it's just uh, it's just a disaster.